Today, we explore a recent setback Neuralink has faced with its first brain implant. But first, let's meet Noland Arbaugh, the first Neuralink patient. Nolan's life changed dramatically when he suffered a diving accident that left him quadriplegic. His world, once filled with physical activity, was suddenly confined to a wheelchair. Enter Neuralink, with its promise of a brain implant that could restore some of Nolan's lost functionality. Despite the risks, Noland embraced the experimental procedure becoming the first human to receive a Neuralink brain implant. But the journey has not been without its bumps. Recently, Neuralink announced a setback. This tale of technological triumph, challenge, and resilience serves as a reminder of the complexities involved in merging man and machine. As we dive deeper into this fascinating story, remember, we stand on the precipice of a new era, where technology and human biology intertwine in ways we could have only dreamt of a few decades ago. Before we delve into the malfunction, it's crucial to understand the different parts of Neuralink's brain implants. Let's break it down. At the heart of the Neuralink implant, we have the threads. These are thin, flexible filaments, smaller than a human hair designed to be inserted into the brain. Their role is to detect and record the electrical signals that neurons emit when they communicate with each other. The precision of these threads is what makes the Neuralink system capable of such detailed interaction with the brain. Next, we have the chips and electronics. These components process the data collected by the threads. Think of them as the brain's interpreter translating the neurons' electrical signals into a language that our devices can understand. Powering all these is the battery. It's designed to last all day so you won't have to worry about running out of juice in the middle of your daily activities. And don't worry, it's rechargeable, much like your smartphone. Encasing all these components is what we call the biocompatible enclosure. This is a protective shell that shields the electronics from the body's biological environment. It's designed to be safe and comfortable for long-term use without causing any adverse reactions in the body. Each of these components plays a vital role in the functioning of the Neuralink system. They work together in harmony to bridge the gap between the human brain and our digital world. With a better understanding of the implant components, we can now explore the surgery process. I appreciate it if you could subscribe and like the video before we take a closer look at how this groundbreaking technology is actually implanted in the brain. The process of implanting the Neuralink chip is meticulously designed and executed. The journey towards enhancing human cognition begins with a meticulously designed surgical procedure. This process, as intricate as the human brain itself, is performed by a highly specialized surgical robot. The surgical robot, a marvel of modern engineering, is made up of two primary components, the base structure and the robot head. The base structure provides stability and precision, while the robot head, equipped with a needle, performs the delicate task of implanting the chip. The base structure, robust and sturdy, is the foundation of the entire operation. It is designed to ensure absolute stability during the procedure, eliminating any potential for error due to involuntary movement or external disturbances. With the patient's head securely positioned, the base structure creates an optimal environment for the robot head to function. The robot head is where the magic happens. It's equipped with a hair-thin needle, designed specifically to navigate the intricate landscape of the human brain. This needle, despite its delicate appearance, is responsible for the precise insertion of the Neuralink chip. The robot head navigates the brain's surface, avoiding blood vessels and ensuring minimal disruption to the brain tissue. The chip, once inserted, is connected to ultra-thin threads that are distributed across different parts of the brain. These threads, finer than a human hair, carry electrical signals from the neurons to the chip, enabling the translation of neural activity into digital information. The entire surgery process is designed to be as non-invasive as possible, with the goal of reducing any potential risks or complications. The use of a surgical robot underlines Neuralink's commitment to precision and safety, minimizing human error and ensuring the highest level of accuracy during the procedure. Armed with knowledge of the surgery, let's now delve into the malfunction that has caused a stir. In a surprising turn of events, Arbaugh's brain implant encountered a setback. This unexpected twist took place just weeks after the successful implantation procedure. The connective threads of the chip designed to link the device to Arbaugh's brain started to retract. This retraction was an unforeseen issue, one that had not been anticipated during the extensive animal testing phase. The threads are an integral part of the Neuralink system. They're like the nerve endings of the device, carrying data signals between the brain and the chip. 
So, imagine if one day your nerve endings decided to pull back, to withdraw. That's exactly what happened with Arbaugh's implant. Now, as these threads retracted, the implant's ability to capture signals from the brain declined. It was like the chip was trying to listen to the symphony of the brain but the music was fading. The notes were becoming distant and scattered. The data received by the implant was less accurate and less reliable, leading to a decrease in overall functionality. But the story doesn't end here. Despite the threads retracting and the data reception being affected, Arbaugh could still use the implant. He could still play chess, a testament to the resilience of the technology and the human spirit. The malfunction did not render the implant useless. It simply reduced its efficiency. What's more, this setback did not pose a direct safety risk to Arbaugh. Even when the threads retracted, the implant remained safe to use, a crucial factor considering the invasive nature of the procedure. Despite this setback, Neuralink has been proactive in addressing the problem. They have not let this hiccup deter them. Instead, they have used it as a stepping stone to improve the performance of the implant, making necessary adjustments to enhance the sensitivity of the device. This is a journey of discovery, a path of trial and error, and Neuralink is committed to navigating this complex landscape of brain chip technology. Addressing the malfunction was a critical test for Neuralink, and indeed, the company rose to the occasion. Despite the setback of the initial malfunction, the engineers at Neuralink were swift in their response. They worked tirelessly to make the necessary adjustments, which resulted in the improvement of the performance of the brain implant. This was not only a testament to the company's technical prowess, but also its commitment to ensuring the safety and satisfaction of its patients. The issue with the implant was reported by Nolan Arbaugh himself, but it did not pose a direct safety risk. The company took the initiative to address the problem head-on, demonstrating their dedication to their mission to enhance the lives of those living with paralysis. Moreover, Neuralink's transparency in this situation was commendable. When questioned by the Wall Street Journal about the malfunction, the company did not shy away from the truth. Instead, they openly discussed the issue, providing detailed information about the situation. The company's co-founder, Dr. Benjamin Rappaport, had previously left citing safety concerns, but Neuralink's handling of this situation displayed their commitment to patient safety. They made algorithm modifications to improve signal detection, ensuring that the implant was still functional and safe for Arbaugh to use. Neuralink's handling of this setback speaks to their dedication to their mission of developing brain implants to assist paralyzed individuals in controlling devices using their thoughts. They are not deterred by obstacles, instead they view them as opportunities for growth and improvement. As we look to the future, we must consider possible challenges that may arise. But as we've seen, Neuralink is prepared to face these challenges head-on and continue pushing the boundaries of what is possible in the realm of brain-computer interfaces. In the realm of advanced technology like Neuralink, potential malfunctions are a valid concern. As we've seen with the case of Noland Arbaugh, the first patient to receive the Neuralink implant even the most meticulous planning and testing can't completely rule out complications. The threads of the implant can retract, causing a decrease in functionality. In Nolan's case, the decreased functionality didn't pose a direct safety risk, but it does remind us of the complexities of integrating technology with the human brain. Looking ahead, we can anticipate other potential malfunctions. For instance, there could be issues with the battery or the biocompatible enclosure. These components are designed to last for a long time and resist the harsh environment of the human body, but they are not invincible. A malfunction could lead to a decrease in performance or, in a worst-case scenario, potential health risks to the patient. In addition to hardware issues, there's the potential for software glitches. The Neuralink system relies on complex algorithms to translate brain signals into commands. A bug in the software could lead to misinterpretation of these signals affecting the functionality of the implant. There's also the question of how the brain itself will react to the implant over time. Will the brain adapt and form new connections around the implant, or could there be unforeseen neurological implications? These are questions that only time and continued research can answer. In terms of life-threatening risks, while Neuralink has been designed with safety as a priority, the possibility can't be entirely ruled out. For instance, if the implant were to malfunction in a way that affected vital brain functions, the consequences could be serious. 
It's important to note that Neuralink is acutely aware of these potential risks and is actively working to mitigate them. Their proactive response to the issues encountered in Nolan's case is a clear example of this. As we continue to watch Neuralink's journey, we remain hopeful yet cautious of the potential implications of this groundbreaking technology.